paint and propane. You know, I think that's a myth that they say cracking your knuckles isn't good for you. This will likely be a shorter video, but both very important topics. Let us start with paint. I really should have my wife here talking all about paint because she did most of it, but I can give you the essentials. And trust me, I'm not gonna give you a time lapse of everything we painted. That video would bore you to death. I will just take a second to talk over this time lapse though and tell you why we did what we did for all things painting. I'll start off by saying painting made everything more stressful. Oh, well, great way to start out the video, Ben. Just being real. But it's also what made our home feel like a home. It makes it feel finished and comfortable. Hey, and I'm all about dumbing things down, but I'm not gonna teach you how to paint in this video. You can learn that somewhere else. But I will show you what we used and where we used it. First, we started by taping everything off and we primed almost everything with, I can't say I know how to pronounce that, Zinser Bulls, oh, Zinser Bullseye 123 Primer. I just always call it 123 Primer. You don't just wanna start painting on bare wood. This is a great sealant to put on before you put your paint on. This stuff is not cheap, but it does cover a lot of area. We then used a satin off-white color to paint most of our walls and generic areas. You wanna try to stay away from dark colors in such a small space. The white makes it feel open and roomy. Again, I learned all this from my wife. I take all the credit for how things work. I take no credit for how good the van looks. That's her. We then coated most every area that had bare wood with this poly finish. We went with a clear satin, tried to stay away from anything glossy in the van. We generally used about two to four coats with a light sanding in between each coat. And you'll see here too, we finished the entire ceiling, which if you've ever painted or finished a ceiling, bleh. You're sore in areas you didn't even know you could be sore in. But I will make sure to make one more mention and that is about our green paint. I emphasize our green paint because this did not come easily or overnight. Mallory went back and forth to Hose, Hose, Home Depot or Lowe's <laughs> to get different paint swatches. I'm telling you this to make sure you test the paint you have with the light you have in the van. The green looks great in the store and then we'd bring it into the van, turn on our lights and it would look gray. Test it with the lights you have and also test it with natural light. What would we keep? What would we change about our paint? Keep are green. We get so many compliments on this color. And again, I'm not the paint guy, but I think that's because it's not too dark and it's also not too light or minty. It's a perfect balance of that forest green that people look for. Something we would change, well, I'll start by saying we wouldn't listen to the person at the hardware store. Because it was such a small space, we wanted to try to cover our cabinets with some type of protective coating. The person at the hardware store said, oh, you can just paint that poly finish right over it. This is my uneducated voice. Nah, but for real. He's a nice guy, but definitely led us astray. Don't paint poly finish over latex paint. You'll get a lot of streaks, and if it's white paint, it'll even turn it yellow. So that was fun to resand and repaint. But in the grand scheme of things, it only took an afternoon, and that's what we would change. So, meh. And to the second half of this video, propane. Let's try that again. Propane. Or I guess I should really say LP or gas hookup. I learned a lot about RV LP installation in this process. I will start by saying our setup is more on the simple end. At this time, we only have our propane running to our gas stove. We don't have a heater for the van, an oven, or a water heater. Before going any farther in this video though, and if you watched my electrical video, I told you this, I am not a professional. Continue at your own risk. If you're curious about what you're watching behind you, that's fully understandable. Looks like he's just making a wooden box. I pretty much am. If you've done a bit of research on this, you'll find that unless you wanna use small LP tanks or have the LP tank mounted on the outside of your RV, which then stealth camping kind of turns into obvious camping, people generally move to go with a vented locker. I'll skip forward here a second and show you kind of what it looked like towards the end. Again, a box. This box, however, will hold your propane tank, and then the hope is that it's gonna be completely sealed. So as you see, I'm adding silicone around all the edges, and then there will be a hole in the bottom of this box, and that hole will align with a hole in the bottom of the van. Yes, another hole in the bottom of the van. Therefore, when everything is shut and the gas is running, if there does happen to be a leak, so many hand motions today. If there does happen to be a leak, because propane is heavier than air, it'll leak to the bottom of this vented locker and out the bottom of the van, instead of you know leaking all over your van. And then you just decide to turn on your stove and <clears throat> that would ruin your day, for sure. So again, vented locker, holds propane tank. 
if there's a gas leak, propane is heavier than air, flows through the bottom of the van, keeping you and your van safe from explosion. So after you build the box and drill the hole in the bottom of the van, you'll fit it with a PVC pipe and put that through the van hole. A few more things I need to note. You wanna use some rubber seal weather strip like this around the door of your vented locker. Again, keeping anything that may leak inside. You also want some stainless steel adjustable latches for the top of your door to make sure it closes and stays tight. I also added this little number inside the vented locker to make sure that tank stays secure. Why was this my hand motion for secure? To make sure the tank is secure. Yeah. Again, our setup is pretty simple. If you do multiple components that require gas, you'll likely need to venture into the copper piping area. And I, I just wasn't ready for that. So I went with this puppy, 15 foot stainless braided propane hose with a regulator. This worked perfect for what we needed. Has a regulator on the end already and it's specifically made for low pressure, AKA a small gas stove. The longest I found at any store was about 10 to 12 feet. If you wanna get anything longer than that, Amazon is your solution. I then prepped to install our stove. We went with a 12 inch built-in gas cooktop, uh, the brand being Gasland. It's really a killer brand name. And they have just awesome ad pictures as well. It's fun for the whole family. <laughs> I make fun, but the stove is incredible. Only have good things to say about the mechanics of the stove. The branding, well, we can work on that. The product is in the description. So then you'll see we cut out our space in our butcher block and installed it via, via the instructions. One thing I'll add, I opted out to use the electric 120 volt igniter. I feel like starting the stove with a lighter is a little more true. And then I also didn't have to deal with wiring up the igniter as well. After we installed it to the butcher block, we attached the fitting and made sure to use the gasket supplied and plenty of Teflon tape. And just like that, you're done. What I would keep and what I would change about our gas setup, I would keep the way we set it up for two main reasons. One, because we haven't blown up yet. And two, the main reason, I love how we don't feel the need to constantly hoard or reserve when using gas. We don't have these miniature tanks and refilling them or picking up a new tank at a gas station is so easy and not really that pricey either. Something I would change here for obvious safety reasons, like you would cooking burgers on a grill, after you're done with it, you turn off the propane. We do the same thing when using our stove, but obviously it's not right next to us. This entails getting out of the van, going Going into the garage, opening the doors, moving some bins, undoing the locker, turning off the tank. Not the most efficient, but then again, a lot of van life is not supposed to be super efficient. We toggled back and forth with the idea of putting the locker underneath the kitchen cabinet, but it just took up way too much space. I have seen solutions of using the locker as a type of bench or seating area. That could be a possibility. All right, that's all I have on painting and propane. I hope it gave you some insight, just even a little bit, 1%, just enough to get you started. Again, all the products are below in the description, our Instagram, email, other playlists. Go ahead, check those out. If you're feeling crazy, go ahead and subscribe. But most importantly, be the change you wanna see in the world. <laughs> what if I was that weird? But for real, do good, love people, build vans, see ya.